This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Chapter 4 looks at learning curves. Learning curve theory attempts to capture what we intuitively know to be true, uh, that as a uh, procedure is practiced more, uh, the workforce will get more efficient and faster at uh, performing that. This is important uh, for performance management because if this improvement is not taken into account and you keep a relatively long time budgeted for the production of units, uh, then the long time for production is likely to end up with a long cost being uh, assumed, a high cost being assumed, which will give you probably a high selling price, which may mean that you're trying to set a non-competitive price uh, and performance suffers. Similarly, if you don't take into account the, the reduction in time as uh, production proceeds, uh, you will maybe pu- uh, uh, turn down some work, say, I've not got time for that, and machines are going to be busy, uh, whereas the, the work that the, is going to the machines could actually, and to the people, could actually be done in a much shorter time, and you could actually say yes to far more contracts. Uh, learning goes were uh, discovered first uh, around the 1920s, uh, when almost 100 years ago, uh, when people were making aeroplanes first. Uh, and the aeroplanes were made out of bits of wood, uh, canvas, bits of wire. They were quite complicated bits of wood to, to kind of fit together and glue and screw together and so on. Uh, and it was almost entirely manual. And that's what you need for good learning effects. Something which is complicated so you can actually learn and something which is manual, because a robot will not get any faster in general at, at, at doing it. And it has to be kind of a question a little bit to, to you know how relevant nowadays learning curves are, given the high automation in many factories. It may be relevant to uh, manual crafts, where you have craftsmen uh, uh, making uh, goods uh, by hand, but I don't think it's relevant in many factories. Anyway, uh, the mathematical uh, idea which they came up with uh, was that as the cumulative output doubles, the cumulative average unit time per unit falls to a fixed percentage of the previous cumulative average unit time. And running through this, we, we very much have the idea of cumulative output doubling, cumulative average unit time falling, and then cumulative average unit time again. It's all working on cumulatives and cumulative output really from from the start. So all of these cumulatives, cumulative times, cumulative average unit times, cumulative production are from the the very first batch or the very first unit that's been made. Uh, Mathematically uh, it can be represented by this equation, we'll come on to to look at this. Uh, We think this equation will be given to you. Uh, we would hope it would be. It must be said that there has been no recent learning curve uh, question, uh, despite the current examiner stating that he thinks it's quite important. Anyway, let's look at a, a simple uh, example to see how we uh, get, get on with it. And here we have uh, the uh, data. The first unit took 12 uh, hours. The learning curve effect is 80%. Uh, there's going to be a steady state from the 50th onwards, we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, but first of all, uh, we have already made four. Uh, how long is it going to take to make another 12? If we do this on a tabular basis, so we'll have the, the cumulative output, cumulative units, So we've made one, and we can only go up and doubling here. So a cumulative number of units here, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Uh, cumulative average unit time. Well, the first unit took 12, it's only one unit, so it must have been 12. Now what the, the learning rule says is that every time you double output, the cumulative average unit time falls to 80% of what it was. So every one of these little leaps as we go down here, we're going to be multiplied by 0.8. So the first one, 12 times 0.8 is going to be 9.6. Then 
the next one, 9.6 times 0.8, could be 7.68. Then 7.68 times 0.8, 6.144. And then uh, finally, 6.144 times 0 0.8 is going to be 4, 4, 4.9152. Let me just see if I can get uh, rid of that down there. Good. And the third column, you're going to have the cumulative time. So one unit took an average of 12, the total time must be 12. Two units take an average of 9.6, so 2 times 9.6, 19.2 is going to be the total time there. Four units took an average of 7.68 per unit, so that's going to be 30.72. Eight units, each taking 6.144. It's going to be uh, 49.152. And finally, 16 units, taking 4.9152. It's going to be 78.64. Now we've been told that they've already made four units uh, and we want uh, to know how long will the other next 12 take. So four units already plus another 12 will bring us up to 16. So this works in the doubling. So we've made uh, four units that would have taken 30.72. By the time we've made a total of uh, 16 we'll be up there at 78.6432. So if you take at 78.6432 minus 30.72. This must be the time for the last 12 units in that 16, or the next 12 units. So 78.6432 minus 30.72 is saying uh, about 47.9. Let's call it yeah, okay, we can keep it. Now, no one would in real life work to this kind of accuracy. Uh, but the, the first unit took 12, and then l later on we were making 12. Uh, it, it's, it's really four times that, so it's only about 48. So, so the learning curve effect is really quite marked. Uh, and we can see this on, on the next slide, uh, how uh, if we move along to, to here, this is the, the, the way it works. So here we have the cumulative average unit time uh, 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 going down this green line. This is the, the output uh, here, okay? So this is the, the, the cumulative output. Oh, and when we made one unit, we had uh, 12. And by the time we were up having made a cumulative uh, number of units, where did we get to in this? Uh, um, uh, we are, are going down kind of really, really, very rapidly, kind of down here. So you get the the best or the most effective learning curve uh, uh, effect in the early uh, stages of production. Thereafter, it takes longer and longer and longer uh, to actually enjoy that learning curve effect. And really, by the time you're, you're out of kind of along here, uh, to all intents and purposes, uh, learning has just about hit a steady state. And it will hit a steady state. Uh, it will, in fact, suppose to hit a steady state. It will not keep improving, even though the theory says that. It will not keep improving because, for example, people simply can't move faster. Uh, it, it takes a certain amount of time to, to put in a screw you, and you can't get any faster than that. You have to walk from here to here and you're already running and you can't run any faster. It may take time for glue to set 
and, and, and so on. And of course, there'll be a bit of a turnover of employees. Uh, so what's reckoned is, is, you know, at some stage out here, you're going to hit uh, the steady state. And that's what we'll look at next. So here's the, uh, the problem kind of restated. Uh, what we want to find uh, out uh, is if the steady state is reached at item 50, then the same time is going to be for item 50, 51, 52, up to 1000, wherever you're going to be going. So if a steady state is reached an item 50, we, that's a very important figure for future planning. And really you have to use this formula. Uh, and the formula has been uh, given here again uh, to you. Y, that is the cumulative average unit time. A is the time for the first unit of the first batch. X is how many units you've produced cumulatively. And the B is the log of the learning curve factor of a log of 2. So the way we get to the time for the 50th item, and that's never going to vary, 50, 51, 52, 53, it's all going to be the same, uh, you find the total time for 50 items, and then you subtract the total time for 49 items. Note that the time for the 50th item is not the cumulative average time, for 50 items. The cumulative average time for 50 items will be the, the 12 hours for the first item, the was it 9.6 for the second item and so on, averaged all the way down. Uh, the 50th item is going to be made indeed very, very efficiently because we're well down this learning curve effect. So here's the uh, calculation done for us. The cumulative average unit time for 50 uh, is, uh, well, Time for the first uh, was the 12. Let me just get this writing again. We can do that. Time for the first was 12, the first item. Uh, and then we are wanting to work out the cumulative average unit time for 50. So the 50 goes in there as the A. Uh, a, a big one is the X. And then the B it's going to be the same no matter where we're going here it's 0 0.8 over point over, over 2 log of 0 0.8 over log of 2. You may well find yourself using buttons on your calculator which you have never used before to work this out and it's worth practicing. You can if you want to uh, before we get on to this if we were to go back a couple of uh, uh, slides uh, what we can do is you could use the formula to work out how long will the next 12 take. We know what's a cumulative average time for 16 using the formula, what's a cumulative average time for 4 using the formula, and, 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 and go on like that. Anyway, here what we have is a cumulative average unit time by the time we got up to 50 is 30.4059. And if instead of going to 50, we were simply to go to 49, the cumulative average unit time would be that. Notice this here is greater than that one. Because by the time we've made 49, we haven't got quite as much learning improvement as by the time we've got to 50. The total time for 50 will be more, but the cumulative average time for 50 will be less because the 50th will pull down the average. You always have to go through total times. So if the cumulative average unit time for 50 is 30.4059, then at the total time for 50 will be 50 times that. And if the cumulative average unit time for 49 is 3.4281, then the total time for 49 units will be 49 times that average is 167. And the difference between those here must be the time for the 50th. 50 items took 170.295, 49 items took 167.977. The 50th must take the difference, 2.318. Around 2.3 is perhaps what people will, will actually put into the, the, the budgets for planning purposes, maybe uh, rather than keeping to, to kind of three decimal places. Now, as I said, there are no recent examples, uh, certainly from the current syllabus, of learning curves. However, the examiner did say it was important, so we, you can't ignore it. Uh, there, 
suggest that for practice you go to the OT notes uh, and you go to uh, chapter 4 uh, example uh, uh, the answers are in the back of the notes here so you want to go to the, the chapter 4 example just to give a little bit of practice uh, some of you uh, if you have uh, the uh, Kaplan uh, book uh, there is an older question uh, in the uh, or there is at the moment in the Kaplan book which is called the Great Western Cake Company it's uh, from June 06 so the, if you have the Kaplan book it's in, called the Great Western Cake Company uh, I have looked uh, briefly through the uh, BPP uh, uh, book and I I don't see it there okay but it is a, a you know quite a quite an old question but if you want more practice on it uh, then that's something to do or something to try to to 